Dutch guest that kindly introduced. My name is Erwin Veldbergen. I uh, hail I'm Belgian by origin, so I speak some of your native languages, not all of them. Um, and I work in the Netherlands. I've uh, been lucky to be there for the past couple of years, working with the film collections, amateur film collections, and now in the research and development uh, department of the Netherlands Institute for Sound and Vision, which is um, one of one of the two national audiovisual institutions that we have. Um, the reason I'm up here and the reason I'm here to welcome you to this uh, unique event um, is to tell you a little bit about the Performa project, um, which is also probably one of the last times that the project was itself will be mentioned um, because it's a bit sort of actual su supportive action happening in the background to the, uh, to the specialized uh, and expertise work happening on the ground here today. Um, so I'm just here to tell you a bit about what it is and why it relates to you uh, all being here, what's the other word being done, and, and how we got to this place. So, um, the way I like to see Performa is as a sort of a stream colliding with a, a, a stream that was already well on its way, and, and part of that stream will be explained to you after my talk by Peter, who will be going into the, uh, uh, the history uh, of FFV1. In the open formats, um, because there was a group with uh, you know, some of the people in the room who were looking into what what do we have as an audiovisual preservation and audiovisual archiving community? What do we have in terms of open formats that can support us uh, in our work? Um, and then what came along was a, a program from the European Commission that allowed a, a bit of a unique structure to um, uh, write out a tender, uh, what's officially called in, in, in commissionees. Uh, a pre-commercial -com pre uh, uh, <coughs> procurement um, to support actions that are so, so innovative that they're not ready for market anyways. Um, I'll tell you a bit more about how that's been going. So I think, in, especially in the case of Majorca FFV1, this kind of combination, uh, it's been a, a, a good moment for so that these forces uh, collide and we could support the work of the, the media area project. So the um, the, the ballpark, the slogan of the Performa project is that it wants to empower memory institutions, memory institutions being any, anything from galleries, libraries, archives, museums, um, as, as a sort of general term. So it, needs to, it wants to empower memory institutions to gain full control over the technical properties of digital content intended for long-term preservation. The idea being, uh, as, as they've uh, introduced, we, especially as in our digital community, but elsewhere as well, in libraries, we sort of we rely on software, we rely on, on technical formats and developed for other purposes than, than long-term preservation. Um, and so Performa is, is looking into how can we bring more of that, um, both expertise uh, and tools and knowledge um, about having that technical control over the files that we uh, are supposed to have um, um, do the safekeeping for uh, and have that in-house. Um, so, in total, uh, there's 2,800,000 euros that, are, that, we're, that we're spending on three different projects uh, by means of this uh, pre-commercial pre uh, procurement um, uh, met methodology uh, in which groups had to write a proposal that were then uh, through a format of evaluation uh, funded or not. Um, the, the, the people behind it is a bit of a, a, a varied group uh, uh, of memory institutions, uh, universities, and technical partners from across uh, the continent, this continent. Um, so uh, there's a couple of libraries, the font is probably too small, but you don't have to, to remember it uh, at all. But just to, to, to show you, like, it's, it's a bit of a variety of audiovisual uh, uh, organizations and, um, uh, and libraries and, um, and universities. Um, so, Um, the interest of the of the of the, the European Commission. The European Commission has been funding research and development uh, programs for for decades now, um, but it's been quite a kind of a recent development that they've been fully supporting open formats and open development. Um, there was a report in two, the, the Digital Agenda report from from 2012, uh, in which they they did a bit of a calculation and looked at if. Uh, all of the, the public bodies uh, would follow open standards, there would be a, a major saving of costs. So it's not this 
it's, it's, it's not just an, an ideological uh, approach that the Commission is taking here, it's also simply uh, mathematics and economics and um, just making sure that uh, as public bodies working with public funding, which, which many of us uh, usually do, if we just look at more at open standards and open development instead of just following market uh, uh, leads, uh, there might be important cost savings uh, for the public and uh, an improved way of doing, uh, performing our missions. Um, so, Reforma tendered for uh, the um, standardization and creating tools to have control over uh, the formats that we use uh, for, in three different uh, directions for three different uh, formats. One paper, uh, formerly paper-based or documents, one for uh, still images, and one for moving images. Um, and so, what an open standard looks for in these three cases has been the source of a lot of debate, especially at first is when we're writing the tenders. Uh, any expert questions should be asked to my colleague Barrett, who's sitting over there from uh, the Fact Center of Expertise in Belgium, who've been doing a lot of work on this. Um, so, with text and documents, it's it's it's, fa it's fairly straightforward. There's a couple of PDF uh, standards that can be followed. Um, for image, it was fairly straightforward as to leaving aside the question whether or not TIFF is an open format. Uh, we decided to go uh, for that. For moving image, we had a bit of a, a, a crunch. Here. There was a lot of uh, prepping, a lot of wondering, a lot of uh, talking about what, it, what is and what isn't an open standard. Um, defined as defined within the project, we wanted a standard that's maintained by a not-for-profit organization. Um, a standard that's available, a standard where specifications are available either freely or at a nominal charge, um, and where the IPR is irrevocably available on a royalty free basis. And so, um, another, another important aspect uh, that we had for you know, picking or, or selecting or going with a certain standard, whether or not it has been adopted in the community. I think a lot of us has to have wondered when we look at our collections or when we are starting a project, what format do I use? And then look around to the other archives. Oh, what, what are they using? What is ENET using? What is Anne Vision using? Uh, what is the Library of Congress using? Um, because that's our sort of what is being adopted. If it's adopted by a lot of people, it also means that a lot of systems follow, and, and that, that's also a way of keeping, uh, keeping it future proof. Um, so, in that process, we started just to look at our, around uh, at ourselves, and, and quickly we saw that even within within the project consortium, we had very different approaches to to this question. Um, Assets and Vision uh, were mostly using MXF OP1A uh, as a, a as a format. Um, I'll go into the why for that choice a bit more later. Uh, and DPX for our film scanning. Uh, the Greek Film Center has. Uh, and yet they get in, they archive just as the Dutch can I think. I think a lot of new productions are always coming on DCP. Um, the, the Royal Library of Sweden was, was using uh, MOV and, and ABIs with MPEG-4 codecs. And in Girona, which is a, 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 regional, a, a regional archive, they get in a lot of different uh, formats. Also uh, sort of relied mostly on commercial, commercially available uh, MOV uh, formats. Um, and so from the bat, it, it sort of became very clear that none, none of the files that we currently, or none of the formats that we currently work with are uh, um, prone to these uh, expectations that we set for the project. Um, many of these file formats use lossy compression, uh, which complicates future migration and transcoding. Um, they almost all use propriety formats and propriety encodings uh, that may complicate future availability of software for reading and writing files. And so, if we follow the, the sort of guided prescription, um, there also, there's, a, there's a very good uh, information page from the Library of Congress about what, what uh, a preservation format should have. Uh, none of us were actually complying with those, with those requirements. In the case of Standard Vision, we're, um, we're a bit of a hybrid archive. We, uh, we archive uh, the public broadcasters of the Netherlands. Um, we have a bit of a unique situation. We, we have a lot of, uh, you know, we have one broadcaster per political or ideological aspirations. So there's a Protestant one, and a Catholic one, and a reformist one, and a liberal one. Uh, and so we get to archive all of those. Um, but we also have um, legacy collections and educational collections. Um, and on top of this, uh, we intend to provide preservation services for other organizations that aren't necessarily skilled in audiovisual formats. 
Um, so way back in 2001, when, when file-based uh, archiving and file-based produ production was coming up, uh, we selected to go with MXF and the OP, OP1A uh, uh, version of it. Um, because that was, that was simply what, was, what had been selected uh, for uh, the broadcast, the closed circuit, that is, the, the broadcast environment. Um, and now, you know, we're 15 years later, we're still sort of relying on it, but uh, when other archives in the Netherlands come to us and ask what format should we use, I'm not sure we should recommend any set. Um, when other uh, organizations uh, want us to preserve their material, uh, it might always be the best choice. So there is a bit of a, uh, there was for us as well, and still is a bit of a question, like what, what format should we go in to support these uh, third, uh, this third kind of, uh, of collections? Uh, and even for our own collections um, for the future. Um, and also, I mean, even though I think we're, we're sort of medium and large size organization, but we, the, the amount of experts that really know the formats from head to toe that can dig in, uh, dig in a, a file format and just go through, go through the bits and understand what, what's really going on inside, uh, there's not a lot of, of experts even in house that we have. And so, um, the, uh, the chance that the format gave is, is by tendering, by involving uh, external experts, um, is working closer with this kind of expertise. And I think that's the expertise in the house, and it's also what I hope all of you will be enjoying at this, at this symposium. Um, so, this sustainability analysis uh, uh, of, I think there's a pipe in there. Um, we did the sustainability analysis of, of, of the formats that we would be tendering for in, in the project. Would be, we'll, we'll share the slides, by the way, afterwards for people. I mean, you're welcome to take pictures, but for the textual content, we'll, we'll share it. Um, not sure if it's going to be an open format. Um, but uh, so, um, I kind of mentioned this, but just to go, go over the basics again, has it been adopted by, by other preservationists? That was a bit of a challenge. Has it been adopted within the consortium was for us a bit of a question. Um, has it been adopted by service providers, the people actually writing the tools to, for the transporting, etc.? cetera? Um, does the license allow for developing open source software? Uh, and is, uh, are the documents and specifications uh, readily available? And so, again, this is, this is mostly uh, a bird's work and work that we did in, in the consortium is this uh, really pretty chart uh, where for text and image there wasn't there wasn't too much of a hassle about uh, choosing what the formats would be. For the visual, we sort of brought broke it down between um, what are we using within the projects, what people are using in the industry, what are open standards, uh, and what could we use and what we could what could we advocate or ask for for performer. Um, and so eventually, none none of the options available really sort of ticks all of the separate boxes. Um, but in the end, uh, we decided to go and fund and, and uh, support the media area project uh, because they covered a lot of the basis in, in the project proposal, uh, the answer to a lot of the question. Um, and whereas adoption of the FIV1 <coughs> would probably be uh, the most questionable aspect when, when the project started, um, this is again something that with the symposium we would like to, to push for. The more people adopt uh, the standard, the more certain we can be that we make the right decision. Um, having, a, having a standard selection and having, having a standard recommendation is, is one aspect. Um, what Performa um, tried, to, um, tried to bring in is that you, know, you, you can talk about standardization for a while, but then people are like, okay, what do I do? When is the standard ready? What can I do with it? Um, so we um, intently, intently um, um, asked the projects to come up with a development process to have to give memory institutions the tools that they can verify uh, the formats with. Um, you know, we all like to play around with tools, we all need a lot of uh, uh, tools on our daily basis, um, but what, what are the tools that you really need to go through the process of, of preservation? Um, so, a requirement of uh, the procurement uh, set by the Commission um, and, and followed within with that all, all the software that we would ask to be developed uh, would be provided under two specific open source licenses, uh, both the Mozilla public license and uh, the new general public license. Um, and also all of the, the documentation around it would be provided under Creative Commons uh, uh, license only. Um, 
and at least the, the Performer website. So I think for most of you, this chart will be familiar. It's a, it's a bit of a redraw of the, the OAS model, uh, uh, a sort of standard model that's been uh, influential uh, to describe the, the ins and outs of digital preservation. Um, so mostly what we were looking at was the, the ingest stage of that, of that model. When, when files are coming in, um, as archivists, we have a choice, like do we just keep whatever format it, it is in and worry about the consequences of that decision later when a format becomes obsolete, yes or no? Or do you choose the moment when something comes in the archive? Do you, um, do you maintain control or do you take control of that format and make sure that it's something that you can uh, rely on? Um, from the performer perspective, we, we uh, severely advocate from, for the latter. Uh, make sure that you get a format in, that you understand, that you fully grasp, that you, that you can have the fully control of. And so the, the tools that we asked to be developed um, needed to support uh, this uh, exercise. So we asked uh, the, the tenderies um, to uh, come up with a proposal for a performance checker that, um, uh, that can verify whether or not a certain standard is really up to par with the standards that it tells you it is, uh, it is conforming to. Um, a conformance checker is a tool that, for us at least, we thought conformance checker would be uh, checking whether a file is being produced according to the specifications um, and whether it matches also not just the, the specifications of the standard but also uh, the acceptance criteria that you as an archive have. Um, that it, uh, it reports what kind of properties deviate from the standard specification, where it deviates, uh, whether or not that's allowable. Um, and it reports back on that both in a human and machine readable format. Um, and that when there's small deviations, simple deviations, that can also help you uh, fix those deviations. So in the end, um, or it's not the end, because the project's running for uh, another year and a half, uh, we funded uh, three different projects. Two of those are not uh, with us today. One of them is uh, uh, the Vera PDF Consortium who are working on the PDFA validation checker. Uh, the other one is a group coming from uh, Switzerland and Spain mostly. They're working on the DPF manager, uh, which is a validator for the to be established TI slash A standard initiative. Um, I can't call it, oh, this is the old logo, sorry. Adobe will sue me <laughs> if I show this to anyone. So it's a TI format for a TIF uh, specification. And then the third, which is the reason we're all here, uh, dropping your video files in the media conscious conformance checker, um, and standard, you know, both standardizing this uh, immersion standard and uh, providing tools for it, which I think the team is doing a great job at. Any further questions? I are always welcome, now or later, and um, I thank you for your attention. Conference muscles, but we have you all day. So, uh, Peter, I think it's your turn. Yes, yes. Hey. <laughs>